You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. You wanted it, you got it. A radio program that helps teach you options trading inside and out, basic to complex. This is Options Bootcamp. Whether you want to learn how to protect your portfolio, generate income, or even become a master of volatility, the Options Bootcamp drill instructors will break it all down for you. Now, let's get you into peak options trading shape. Here are your Options Bootcamp drill instructors, All right, everybody. That music means we are back here for all you live folks with episode two of our Options Bootcamp Live Double Header. Man, we spent a lot of time talking about binaries, but there's a lot to say about them. Hopefully, you enjoyed that episode, got a lot out of it. If you didn't, if you missed it for some reason, go back one week in your podcast player of choice and check out our episode entitled probably WTF or Binaries. <laughs> Because that's a question a lot of people have out there. My name, of course, Mark Longo from theoptionsinsider.com, as well as from the ever-exciting network upon which so many of you are binging on the on-demand side. Thanks to all of you who enjoy it, who drive up my bandwidth costs week after week, and also take the time to rate and review. It does help new people continue to discover the program. We appreciate that. Of course, if you want more content in your lives, you want great pro Q&A sessions, like we just had this week with the Spikes father himself. We talked a little bit of crypto in there as well as just pure equity volatility and other asset class volatility answering all of your questions mr simon ho haven't talked to him in over a year i was kind of fun beaming him in from australia answering all your questions as well as options oddities every week live access to this show everything else we do here so if you want to get access to these live boot camp double headers that dan and i seem like we're doing every week these days <laughs> only one place to go the options insider.com slash pro of course while you're there you also get automatically entered into our drawings for our pro trading creators gave another one away last week man shipping costs are crazy these days but we love you folks out there we send you all sorts of cool unique bespoke goodies from the world of options and derivatives some of them are have some historical value <laughs> so you could probably sell this stuff but no we give it to you folks out there the options insider.com slash pro is the place to go and let's see who's joining me once again the streak is alive i am joined by the black-hatted one himself, Mr. Dan Passarelli from Market Taker Mentoring. Mr. P, welcome back to the show, sir. Mark, I would not let you down. I come here every week at this time. Uh, and here we are together again. Here we are together again for a little bit of the old mail call. Mail call. Time to look at questions submitted by our listeners. All right, everybody, let's get to it with the old mail call. And I know what you're here for. I know what you get excited about. We got so excited about binaries last week. We didn't have a chance to get to it. But this week, listeners, it's the moment we've all been waiting for. It is the market taker question of the week. All right. So I've been getting this question a fair amount. And that is, is this a good time to be trading covered calls? And my answer is decisively uh, yes. It's it's almost always a good time to be trading covered calls, um, and the key is to stick with it and to manage them and to you know not get shaken out. And um, 
you know, anytime you're doing a, a covered call or a, what I call the recycle trade, uh, some people call it the wheel trade, is to, you know, try and not wait too long. You know, like if you get assigned or something like that or something expires, you know, you kind of have to pick your spots, but you, you, it's not a market timing thing. It's a, it's a thing where you're just collecting premium, collecting premium, not trying to necessarily predict the market and, um, you know, just, just keep it going. So yeah, you know, e- even with premiums this low in a lot of names, the implied volatility that you can sell the options at is still higher than the historical volatility. So it's still an edge based trade. Can be. We were just debating this yesterday in our pro Q&A. Some of our live listeners are making that same point. Even with vol this low, it, you can still trade it. There is still a risk premium to be found in certain names, not everywhere. And a lot of names are hanging pretty much at 52-week or even historic all-time vol lows. <laughs> we haven't seen VIX this low in quite some time, listeners. So intriguing stuff out there, listeners. Speaking of intriguing stuff, you folks are always intriguing. So let's get to some of your thoughts before we even get to this week's question. Let's 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 pay off what you folks had on your brain last week. In fact, this touches very nicely on what Dan was just talking about. We said many of your favorite names are trading at or near 52-week lows in volatility. Which of these names would you rather buy one month volatility in right now and aka buy some one month options listeners? We gave you four choices, Apple, Microsoft, Tesla, or the S&P 500. I don't care what flavor, SPX, SPY. Pick your poison out there. Dan, which name do you think won our poll with our listeners, sir? No cheating. Oh, man. That is a hard one. Um, I, I'm going to guess Tesla just because people associated with volatility – um, whether or not, you know, that's true or not, or I believe it or not. Um, you know, I just think that subconsciously, psychologically, if people are thinking which one of these has a better chance of the volatility going up, I'm thinking they're going to say Tesla. Dan, you are quite the just deeply insightful person. 38.8% Tesla took the top spot, sir. So there you go. You know our listeners. You know our audience at the end of the day. Right behind it was the S&P 500, 32.7%. That kind of surprised me. I thought they might go more single name. Uh, Microsoft, 18.4%. This really surprised me. Only 10.2% for Apple. And it was hovering between 5 and 7% for most of our poll. Apple's been at anemic vol levels for quite some time. So I thought just, just name recognition and the fact we've talked about it a lot on the network lately, being so cheap from a vol perspective, would have given it a little bit more love, but nobody liked it. Turned out that would have been a good choice. They've had a nice pop. <laughs> with this whole headset madness. Uh, but intriguing stuff. No love for Apple. So that kind of surprised me. A lot of love for Tesla. Not exactly surprising there. But intriguing stuff nonetheless. Dan, let's fast forward to this week's question of the week. By the way, listeners, no matter when you're listening to this, could be today, tomorrow, a year from now, 10 years from now. Maybe not 10 years from now, but chances are probably. There will be good content and good polls for you to participate. At Options is the place to go on Twitter. So even if you can't vote, In this exact poll, which by the time this hits the network, probably will be done. But you will have other great questions of the week to play along with. At Options on Twitter is the place to go. If you did so this week, listeners, you would see our question of the week is, we've seen a lot of green on the screen this year, but also seen aggressive bursts of selling that can turn things red quickly. Quite simply, will the S&P 500, again, I don't care your flavor, SPX, SPY, whatever, Will it close positive on the year, Dan? Heck yes or heck no. Which way are you going? Which way do you think our audience is going? Ooh, you know, um, I'm a pretty optimistic sort of fella. And I think that our audience is too. So I am going to say up on the year. I'm going to say that. Yep. I had a feeling you were going that way. You are quite the diehard optimist, sir. Call you the black-headed one more ironically than anything. (laughs) (laughs) and once again sir you are in tune with the pulse of our listeners if ever so narrowly sir because 53.1 percent right now are saying yes and 46.9 percent saying heck no so i guess that's what makes a market sir nearly 50 50 on whether we'll close positive on the year so uh, intriguing stuff out there get your votes in if you haven't already listeners 
at options. I do believe uh, one of our pro listeners is very steadfast in his heck yes, yes, age of Del Aquarius. He said he's standing behind his heck yes vote. I get you. I mean, we're right now, statistically, we are positive. So if I, nothing else happens, we are hanging out there. So intriguing stuff. Speaking of the live, let's go out to the live. Uh, options queen is a question for you, Dan. Uh, she's one of our stalwart listeners as well. Very prescient on our vol guessing game on, on crystal ball every week on volatility views. She, she knocks it out of the park. She has a question for you, Dan. She says, is there a beam in option, uh, pun intended, for Dan's retreat or is it all in person? So options queen wants to know, if she can't make it out to uh, California, is there some sort of beaming option available? Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, there is not. Uh, we look through the logistics of it, and um, it's just a little tough. Um, we we kind of tried messing around with some of that one year, and it's just it's a distraction. So sorry, not this year. But hey, you know, I mean, you might as well jump on a plane and join us. There you go. Options queen. Take us to California. I hear they're very reasonable. It's in, it's in the Sonoma, Napa. Where are you guys again? Uh, basically, like right in the middle on the southern tip, real easy to get to. It's in a place called Rohnert Park. Um, so, yeah, nice and convenient if you want to go wine tasting. But uh, if you don't, it's still a beautiful part of the country. Enjoy a few beverages with Dan. That's the real reason he does it out there. He enjoys a good adult beverage out there. Enjoy one with him in person at the week. You can't drink with him virtually, right? Dan, you can't drink through the screen. doesn't work no. that way. <laughs> no, no, you can't do that. All right, let's get out some of the other questions here. Let's go to uh, G&B. I like that handle. I have no idea what it stands for, but G&B wants to know, can either of you share a story of a weird or maybe stupid trade <laughs> that you made that ended up working out? You know what, G&B? You have interesting timing on this one because I was just joking about this a couple of days ago. In fact, yesterday I was just sending uh, some jokes back and forth, some of my compatriots on the option block and volatility views show, because on that volatility view show, we talk about volatility every week. If you're not listening to the full network listeners, you're just listening to OBC, man, you're missing out on a lot of fun, including ball views every Friday on that show. We talked at the beginning of the year, VIX was obviously much higher, well into the twenties, maybe threatening 30. And we saw someone come in and just load up on a ton, a hundred plus thousand of the June 15 puts. And we joked about it. We thought it was a funny trade. They got them off for like eight or nine cents, I thought. And I was looking at the market at the time we were doing the show and it looked like I could get them for cheaper. So just as a joke, as a bit of a lark, I went out and scooped some of these to penny this person for seven cents. I got filled. <laughs> and then I think I even bought some more because we were talking about it during the show. And it seemed like a silly, fun trade. It was not a recommendation. It was not a trade that we ever thought in a million years, Dan, would ever have any sort of value. It was done more for content for the show. And we all did it. It was kind of a lark and kind of fun. And then fast forward, Dan, I had forgotten about these. They were still on my books. I had forgotten about these. And then lo and behold, Dan, last week, I was checking some accounts and I noticed this weird burst of green in one of these accounts. And I was like, what is uh. this? <laughs> and I went and clicked on it. And I was like, sure enough, I was like, oh, crap, I forgot about these June 15 puts. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> that are now trading at 7 <laughs> or 8x what we paid for them. Oh. So I just dumped half of the position for 50 cents. So you're talking a 7x or there. And just to be stupid, I'm working the rest for a buck. I'll let you know if <laughs> I get filled. <laughs> but it wow. was a completely laughable, absurd, ridiculous trade. Uh, we did it, again, more for content for the show. And to kind of be emblematic of what you might do with a position like that, which is not much. And lo and behold, Dan, it's looking at at least a 7X or maybe a 10X or more. So that's a great example of a very recent ongoing example right now of a very stupid trade that's worked out. So I guess the next time I see you, Dan, uh, beverages will be on me. All right, let's do it. Do you have an example for GNB, sir? Uh, not a recent one, unfortunately. Um, and boy, it sure seems like most of the time when there's something goofed up or stupid, it's, it feels like it always ends up working out against you. Um, and maybe it does, but you know, I do remember one time when I was trading on the floor where I was I was running late and, you know, truth be told, may or may not have had a little bit of a hangover. And, uh, you know, I'm I'm never I was never late, but I was I snuck in right before the bell and looked down at my computer and I'm like, 
uh, stupid thing. It tells me I'm up $26,000. Uh, damn it. What's wrong? Uh, and I'm looking around and somebody's like, Hey, did you see Kerr McGee? And I look up, I'm like, Oh, no, I, you know, I just happened to be long, a lot of gamma in there that I was trying to get rid of, uh, the day before trading Delta neutral. And, um, you know, the stock ended up, up 11 bucks. I forget if it was earnings or what it was, but it's like, oh, okay, well, that's a pretty good way to start the day. <laughs> now, truth be told, GNB, I had that experience a couple other times where I had negative gamma, and you know, those were uh, really unfortunate situations and and bigger uh, unlucky losses than my lucky gain that time. But uh, still a fun story to share, I guess. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than smart, sir. No, indeed, I'll take it. <laughs> Let's go out here to uh, Abby. See a lot of new names here. And that, I love that. New listeners writing in. We welcome all of you here on the show, including the ladies. Love to see the ladies out there as well. Abby wants to know, uh, where do Mark and Dan typically do most of their trades on the options chain? Are you front mo- front mothers? I think she meant front monthers. <laughs> I'm going to assume that's what you meant, Larry. Even though, I, I don't know. Dan, how, you like that term, front mother? Are you a front mother, sir? <laughs> I'm a front mother. I kind of like that. You might have to title our episode that, the front mothers. <laughs> so are you are you front mothers, oh, weekly, daily, at the money, out of the money, inquiring minds want to know? Intriguing. I don't tend to think of it. And myself as a front mother, but I guess I am. I think most of my trades do fall in that, I would say, one to two week category. I'm not a zero DT. I've talked about that before. I got too much stuff going on on this network to really babysit a lot of that stuff. I've learned from my use case, especially now post launching the network and everything, my use case, my sweet spot tends to be trades that are not too long. I don't want to sit on things for a month or longer. I think one to two weeks tends to be my sweet spot. Uh, I tend to do things like flies and other things like that. So they would be more out of the money, maybe at the money to out of the money type trades, maybe picking up, let's say, an at the money call, selling an out of the money call, buying another one farther, something along those lines. Trades you could put on that have a reasonable probability of paying off and also are on a fairly near dated short term time horizon. So I could reset them, take them off, do something else. I, I don't have a lot of time uh, to babysit a lot, of, which is ironic. People think I'm here slinging contracts all day. But hey, I'm talking to you folks all day. So sometimes it's hard. You might hear some of my other co-hosts, a hint, hint, Dan, binging in the background, putting up trades, and they're not paying attention. Not me, listeners. I'm here (laughs) for you folks 24-7. So I think that's my sweet spot. I am indeed a front mother, but more of a a front two-weeker, really. I think maybe two weeks is my optimal. You heard me on even shows like uh, Options Oddities, if you're on the pro side, listeners. I don't like to go out even like selling straight premium and let's say a name I want to pick up. I'm not going to sell a December out of the money or at the money put. I don't like that much time on it. I'd much rather maximize the time decay, a couple of weeks, a month at the outset, maybe two if I'm really going crazy, and then kind of take it from there. I get to keep the premium or I take the underlying, I reset and do another trade against it. Long-term trades for me, not kind of my bailiwick. So Dan, I guess I would definitely be a front mother and perhaps a front two-weeker, sir. What about you? Uh, yeah. Um, you know, if you were to map out the volume of, uh, you know, the average option contract, like, is it in the front? Is it in the back? You know, three months out, is it in at or out of the money? I would think that my trading style is probably exactly typical in that regard. Um, I tend to stay less than two and a half weeks uh, I will do some zero DT, but you know, like Mark, I'm teaching classes, coming up with classes, writing PowerPoints for um, for our retreat coming up. Um, so I don't trade them all the time, but I do sometimes. And then you know, near the money options, uh, somewhat out of the money, is kind of where I live too. So yeah, I mean, I think. I think in that regard, I, I trade the, the 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 typically highest volume options. But to clarify, Dan, you too are a front mother. I am a front <laughs> mother indeed. I've been called a mother before, yeah, that's for sure. That's true. I, I yeah. probably have called you that a few times. <laughs> so yes, we're just a whole bunch of front mothers here. And Abby, we just love you. We're not making fun of you. We love your terminology. <laughs> You've coined a new options phrase. Let's see if it can stick. Mm-hmm. Out there. Let's go back to the live. Let's go to Option God. He's just got a comment. He says, I wish I listened to you guys with those puts on Volviews 
I remember that episode and laughing along with you guys on those puts. Who'd have thought they would become a 10 banger? Yeah, we certainly did it. Again, it was more for a joke. We were really just trying to annoy that person who bought 100,000 of them for a much worse price. We wanted to show them it could be done better, and we did. <laughs> uh, so he's laughing all the way to the bank, I guess, or she right now as well, because those puts are paying off in much more size for them, uh, but still kind of funny nonetheless. So yeah, you made the right choice option, guy. We never said it was a good trade. It was a silly, fun, as you said, a trade that made you laugh, which sometimes is worth it for these shows. But yeah, sometimes those trades are not done to be uh, a 10 banger, as you put it, but that's the way it worked out there. So uh, we'll take it. And we'll have to see if that person took the rest of his off because he's sitting on some money. Who would have thought Vix would be kissing a 13 handle before June expiration? But that's where we're hanging out there, listeners. Obviously, that front June contract, going back to the front mothers, the front June future, not quite there yet. I think it was in a 15 handle last I checked. A lot of distance between the cash and the front June future. If none of that makes sense to you, uh, check out our Ball View show. We explain it in a little bit more detail there, listeners. So you need that distance to come in a little more. I'd be happy to see it uh, drop quite a bit, but intriguing stuff out there, listener. Well, let's keep going. All new handles on the show today. I love that. Let's go out to Mr. Jakes. Mr. Jakes, plural? Maybe Mr. Jake S. I don't know. Let's go to Mr. Jakes. Mr. Jakes says, how are we looking heading into the halfway point this year for options numbers? <laughs> are we kicking it or is Loval killing it? Wow, we got very... Very creative people with their questions. Are we kicking it? I don't know. Are we kicking it? Let's find out, Dan. Let's go out to the source of record. Our friends over there at the Options Clearing Corp, a.k.a. OCC. I don't know, Dan. I think this would qualify as kicking it. Yeah, look, kicking it is bad, I'm assuming, in his thing. So, no, low ball is killing it. So, in his terminology, we are kicking it. Uh, so, yeah, the numbers for May. Remember, we just talked about listeners. March, a record month. The busiest month in the history of the options business going back to the primordial ooze days of 1973. 1.1 billion contracts. Not only was it the busiest month ever, but also over a billion contracts. That's never been done before. So we've been wondering now, hey, can, can we possibly touch that again? Can we hit that? Can we hit 1 billion? Uh, we were talking with our buddy, Mr. Matt, the keeper of all the options data. He was thinking we were going to come in low for this month, but it looks like the number is actually surprisingly high. 949.1 million total contracts, according to the OCC, up 9.5% compared to May of last year. And not the highest, obviously, March was the highest, but the third highest month in the history of the options market. I forgot what other month comes in at number two, probably sometime this year, maybe February. Uh, but so, yeah, not quite a billion, but pretty darn close. And then uh, some other highlights, index options up 32.5% since uh, this time last year. And a year-to-date ADV listeners, so average daily volume through the end of May, 44.5 million contracts. That's up nearly 7%, 6.6% compared to this time last year. So all other things being equal, if we just continue this level for the rest of the year, we'll be up nearly 7% total volume. So. I think to use your terminology, Mr. Jenks, Mr. Jakes, he's admitted that. <laughs> uh, Mr. Jakes, I think this qualifies as kicking it. But I don't know. I'll leave it up to Dan to decide. Dan, do you agree? Are we kicking it or is Loval killing it? Mr. Jakes wants to know. Uh, yeah, I mean, what you're talking about there, I mean, sounds like some pretty good stuff. Um, I, I honestly didn't know exactly, you know, the exact figures or anything before then. But, um, yeah, I mean, hey, man, um, I I think we're on our way to, I, I think we can potentially be on our way to a pretty good year. And, you know, the, the funny thing is that, like, in theory, you would think that, well, yeah, you would think that in, in a down year and the volatility that we had the first half of the year um, would have contributed to, like, a lot of volume. and. Um, I don't know. Even though right now we're in a lower volatility regime, I wouldn't be surprised if it picks back up again. All right, Mr. Dan. That music means we are coming to a close here on our episode two of Options Bootcamp Extravaganza. Mr. P, if folks want to hit you up, actually, I'll, I take it back. <laughs> I saw one just pop in right as I fire off the music. Nichols, 
get one in under the wire. All right, we'll be nice. We'll squeeze one more in here, Mr. Pete, because we love all of our pro folks out there. Uh, Nichols wants to know, what will it take to get Mark and Dan into zero DTE? Well, Dan has already said he's a bit of a convert. He's slinging mm-hmm. them. So I guess I'm more the reluctant party here. I don't know. Maybe a, a week off of shows. <laughs> yeah. If I have no shows and you folks don't want any content, I'll sling all the zero DTE you want. Now, that, that's a facetious answer. The truth is I have been eyeballing them for a while. I just haven't really put on anything that really intrigues me. If, if I do, and I, I will sometime in the next few months. I will take some forays out there and we can talk about the experience. I know a lot of you out there are slinging. A lot of you are still reticent, I understand. Look at our poll, 50-50 out there. It's not everybody has been lured to the dark side, but I should trade a few of them so we could talk about them here more coherently, concisely here on the network. So I'll probably look at some very risk-mitigated stuff, uh, maybe some straight spreads, some flies to start with, kind of binary analogous type trades. Buy a fly, if it hits, it's okay. If not, no big deal. Maybe buy a vertical Maybe sell a vertical. I probably won't go short premium to start. I'll probably look at buying first. And probably just do some initial forays that way. And I'll report back to you folks on my thoughts. The liquidity, the experience, the overall a time I had trading these things. And if it intrigues me, I mean, again, as I mentioned with the last question, my sweet spot tends to be kind of one to two weeks. So zero DTE falls outside of that range. So it's not really my sweet spot. But, you know, I'm willing to be proven wrong, Mr. Dan. I'm willing to admit and maybe uh, I, I just haven't been doing something that is great. I don't know. So, Mr. Dan, you sound like you're you're in it a little bit. What will it take to get you to do more zero days? You know, honestly, kind of um, leaning off what Mark was talking about earlier. If I if I didn't have the responsibilities to our student traders that I have of you know doing classes and creating classes and creating new products and all that. Um, I, I would be more a, more active in it, um, but you know, it's it's something that you have to be looking at a lot. Um, by definition, you're probably looking at it, probably making a trade every day, and then monitoring it throughout the day every day. So, yeah, it, it, if anything, it's just more of a of a time choke point. We say when you're trading these, are you mostly short premium? Are you long premium and spreads? What are you doing out there? Mostly short premium. You selling verticals and stuff? Yep, yep. There you go. Dan, lean into the dark side. Well, there you go, Mr. Nichols. Hope that answers your question. Now, now that music means (laughs) we are done, Mr. P. But before we go, it's obviously too late to join you on the retreat this year. Maybe folks have questions about what you're cooking up over there at MTM. And you always have future events coming up. Uh, maybe it'll be another in-person thing at the SIBO in the near future. They want to join you for all that fun. Dan, where should they go? What should they do? Yes, there actually just might be an in-person thing at the SIBO coming up soon. And so you can find out about it. Just join our, um, you know, join our mailing list. You can go to marketaker.com, click join free, communicate with me and our other coaches and some of our top students in our chat room. And, um, you know, we send you out good articles. I send you out a daily video to help you navigate the markets. You will like it, my friends. And you'll get to hear about some of our in-person events as well. There you go. Check them out over there, markettaker.com. Don't forget the second T for Theta. That is going to do it for us on the network today. Also going to do it for OBC for our double header this week. Hope you enjoyed it. All the pro folks. Uh, You heard it all live already. The rest of you folks will be getting it down the road. Dan will be traveling for the next few weeks, and I'll be kind of doing a little bit of business over the next few weeks as well. So you'll be getting some of these on demand on the podcast side down the road. Remember, if you want to hear them live, you want to join the pro Q&As, the options oddities, get entered into the drawing to win the pro trading crate, and, of course, to engage live with this show and everything else we do here on the network. Only one place to go, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro. Uh, back again tomorrow for the option block as well as this week in futures options. Back again, actually on Friday. Like I said, we got some stuff coming up on Friday, so I'm not sure what the schedule is going to be for Friday. No live vol views, no live options out of these, that's for sure. I'll see if I can get some stuff into the feed for you folks, though, so you're not missing out to have a little bit of content coming your way. And then back again next week, another episode of Options Bootcamp. Stay safe out there, everybody. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. 
For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. <laughs>